Hello and welcome to another episode of the Full Force Weekly brought to you by Generals Joe's Reborn.com with me, Christopher McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80. For today's episode, I am joined by the awesome Paul Plastic Battles Pantholone. In this regular video series, we round up all the week's news in the world of G.I. Joe. It's Full Force Weekly. How are you doing, you mate? just leave that in. <laughs> I do. I, I always leave the, <laughs> the stupid fart noises I make in there. Yeah, I'm going full-on version 2 Storm Shadow today in my uh, mm-hmm. hoodie. Just just felt felt like I wanted the hood up. I don't know why. That's just a vibe I'm going for right now. You can almost get uh, something similar uh, in the future, I saw this yes, week. Yes, yes. And we'll get to uh, we'll get to that in the shout-outs. But f- let, should, we, should we get stuck into the most ridiculous, once again, most ridiculous news week ever? Yeah, it's crazy. Let's go. I think last time I spoke to you, did I? We, we, I was talking about the, like the record of news bursts and, and videos I'd done in between weeklies. This week mm-hmm. has obliterated that. It's kind of crazy how much stuff that there is to talk about, <sighs> mate. Honestly, first up, then, and this is this is forever clever news. Forever? Forever? Ever? Forever clever? (laughs) I don't know why I haven't done that yet, but I'm doing it now. They have updated their website with images and info regarding their G.I. Joe construction sets, as well as upcoming sets as well. Yes, a lot of the confusion surrounding this line, which randomly appeared in Tuesday morning stores around the country last week, was quashed thanks to the update to the website. The sets come in basic 45, large 100 and mega 150 piece sets with a special Cobra Rattler set made up of 244 pieces and 4 minifigures. They even posted two brand new upcoming sets, the 205 piece Mean Dog and the 204 piece Tomahawk set both coming with three minifigures each. Forever Clever also replied to an inquiry by our very own Patrick Stewart who asked about availability. They responded with the following email. In regards to where these products can be purchased, below is a list of national retailers that will be carrying the G.I. Joe construction sets. Amazon items will be in stock within a few weeks. Five Below, Dollar General, Ross, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Family Dollar, Tuesday Morning, Burlington, 99 cents only stores, Macy's Backstage, Big Lots, Beals, DD's Discount Stores, Christmas Tree Shops, that's it. Uh, additional national retailers will be carrying the G.I. Joe construction sets in the near future. If you want to see what figures come with the sets, then feel free to check out the images on our socials or just follow the His Tank article link in the description below if that's easier. Paul, are you into these? And I will say, are you looking forward to that Mean Dog and Tomahawk? I haven't. I have one Creo set, right? So and I and so that was like the ferret in the Outpost Defender, I think. So. Typically not, but I saw the mean dog and I'm like, the mean dog? Like, what? <laughs> no. what an odd choice. Like I, I happen to have one uh right here on the oh. shelf. It's one of my it's one of my favorite vehicles. Uh it's a beauty. most underrated underrated vehicles in my opinion. It was like um, the it was like the equivalent of the maggot, wasn't it? For Cobra yeah. in a sense. That kind of like yeah, modular the- Yep. separation type job wasn't it yeah yeah they did the maggot in 87 and they came back in 88 with the mean dog for the joes you know so uh so i'm i'm kind of excited actually there is a dollar general like right down the street nice so i might just walk down there and see what they got but if uh if they're like if they're that easy to get like if i could walk down the street and they have them in stock i know they're pretty cheap right so yeah it's like 399 whatever they have yeah like 399 for the smaller set 699 for the the mid-range I'm get no actually six ninety nine for the Sky Striker, so I'm guessing it'll be slightly more expensive for the Rattler, which seems to be like a massive special set. And there is a Night Raven, I think, comes in a two pack with a Sky Striker, which is really odd. So you're going to be really bul- bulking <laughs> up your Air Force, aren't you? If you want to get all of the vi- all of the uh, the uh, the planes. Yeah, I saw the assembled versions were kind of um, an abstract version of <laughs> so yeah. likenesses might likenesses may vary, may vary but, yes uh, yes i still think it's kind of cool so i might yeah, I, definitely I, what i'm one. what i think i like about this is obviously it's low price point so it's kind of hitting you know some kids that you know might not have tons of money to spend on like classified figures and so on and so forth but mm-hmm. like it, it's giving like another option i think but i i do yeah the quality is pretty low i mean you get what you pay for effectively um right. the, but what i'm kind of digging is the fact that all these little minifigures which which look really cool yeah and, you know they, they, they can't really mess up a minifigure can you and with that you're getting tons of them yeah i saw which one comes with like a whole a cobra one that comes with a bunch like cobra commander so the cobra and, rattler that comes with uh Destro, cobra commander and two pilots yeah. i believe yeah, yeah i mean there are I other saw. sets so the surveillance <laughs> patrol which is like 
It's got an awe striker artwork on the box, but it looks way. nothing like an awe striker. It it's looks just like, like a Jeep. Yeah, it looks like a mixture between a vamp and awe striker and like the original GI Joe 1960s like US Army Jeep. Yeah, it does. Uh, so it's kind of like a mixture of all those things, but it's got like tons of stuff in there. It's got a surveillance drone. It's got mm-hmm. like multiple. Yeah, figures. that was pretty cool. It's drone, got yeah. Captain in there, which I think is like Joe Colton. Because he's, he's it, people were saying Flint, but he's like looking wise, it's like a green like mm-hmm. gear, and he kind of looks like Joe Colton to me. So maybe, maybe he's just a generic GI Joe from the sixties paired with his generic Jeep from the 60s. exactly generic generic Captain Joe, yeah. Captain Joe, yeah, amazing. That's what we'll call him anyway. Uh, but they're fun. I must admit, they're really fun. And obviously, this website update was great because it gave us loads of cool like images of all the sets and what you get mm-hmm. with them kind of really clarified a lot of stuff because we were kind of piecing it together through images online where people were like, oh, I found these at like, you know, insert discount store here. Right, like thing. Tuesday morning and stuff, yeah. And they, yeah, the, the, the images were coming in, but not like consistent. And it was always mm-hmm. like 20 of the ferrets have been found and like two of the Sky Strikers and none of these other sets. So yeah, it's nice to actually see what's available and what's coming. Mate, if they're doing the Mean Dog and the Tomahawk this early, mm-hmm. you know... We can definitely expect a buzz bore at some point, can't we? Oh my god! Yeah, a warthog or a oh, bug, cobra bug, a cobra bug. That would be they can insane. Do whatever. That'd be insane. A just... little min- mini figure secto viper yeah. would be brilliant. Oh my god! With the dome. Yes. Oh, the, the <laughs> possibilities are endless with GI Joe vehicles because there's so many of them mm-hmm. and cobra as well. So this is great. Uh, okay, that, are you looking forward to any others that might be on the horizon? I mean, you mentioned two there, but are there any others that that you'd love to see? Uh, like a battle platform would be pretty fun, right? Good, good shout. Play sets, good shout. Yeah, because it could come with like a Skyhawk or something that somewhat resembles a Skyhawk, and you could put it on the helipad, you know. So, <laughs> that's somewhat, so that would be cool. That somewhat resembles a helipad. Yes, yeah. um, I, I, that, I'm in. You've got. I was going to say something. I was going to say like I don't know uh, an HQ, but yeah, the ta- tactical battle platform is still up there for me as one of the greatest Mm -hmm. like play sets not and it's not even massive that's the thing it's not even a huge play set like you you know it's dwarfed by the mobile command center by the hq well not by the hq but it's dwarfed by the mobile command center by the flag uh by the terradrome and then you get the tactical battle platform but it's just packed full of cool features and yeah little cubby holes for like the what i always loved was the little rack with the weapons um oh, yeah did you uh, am i right in remembering i might be wrong here were there like snow job <laughs> rifles included in that yeah it was like uh rip cords rifle and gray they're all the same gray right i think yes. it was airborne uh i think there was like a regular grunt m60 i have them all separated over there in one of my cups I, but, uh, it's one of my yeah. favourite toys as a kid. The Action Force one that we had was was brilliant. Slightly different artwork as well on the front, uh, which is pretty mm-hmm. interesting because that's to obviously change all of the GI yeah. Joe bits and stuff like that. But but um, you know what? Uh, what's great about it as a kid was it broke down so easily you could take it anywhere. Yes. It was like a, a play set that you just pull the legs off. You could pull the two platforms of the gun and the, the, the missile the rack off and the helipad. In, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, br- and just, the bridge kind of could, folded up into it, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you could carry it down the street to your friend's house. You could throw it in the car, take it to your grandparents' house. Like it was so easy to get around with that whole play set. So. Did you ever? Did you ever actually get it in any water-based scenarios? Did you actually get it in the water up against like the side of? Because I never, don't think I ever did that as a kid. I don't think I did either. You know, I think the probably the closest I did was like a blue blanket in the house. You know, for a while. brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. That's probably the closest. But I think uh, the the other thing about it is all the different aspects, like the little section for... This has completely gone on a tangent. The little section of, you know, like the kind of uh, the the communications room or like the, like you Mm -hmm. know, the... uh, the, the, I I don't know what you call it, but like the the tech room and the the little... All the little bits that kind of attach to around the the edge, like that kind of... um, uh, like the the uh, the, vo- the glass. glass that kind of popped, yep. yeah, the plastic kind of square element that popped. You were in. real lucky if that thing didn't warp over time. You know Big what I mean? Time or it didn't Big come time. warped in the in the box. Yeah, uh, I was lucky then in that sense. But yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful piece of equipment, and all those different like panels you could take off to pretend you were fixing stuff, yeah. like on the on the actual panels where the the guns and the missile launchers and everything mm-hmm. were. Just so good. The the little uh, crane at the back, the little uh, oh yeah, that was I mean, that got a lot rod. of use. Yeah, yeah, I was always time. using that with like the devil fish or the hovercraft or something. Absolutely. Anyway, 
That's the greatest playset of all time. Love, would love to see that in the forever, forever, ever, forever clever lineup. Um, let's move on, shall we, dude? Because there's so much to talk about. Yeah, let's go. In book news, the young adult G.I. Joe classified novel series, Book One, has gone up for pre-order at most book retailers. Written by John Scovran and illustrated by Phil Noto, the book comes in at 256 pages for $14.99 hardcover and $9.99 digital for Kindles and devices. It was originally supposed to be coming out in August, but the date was pushed back to November the 23rd. You can order one yourself by following the link in the description. Paul, interested in this? What are your thoughts about this? Because we know about the description of what this book is, don't we? Right. Uh, yeah, I pre-ordered one, so uh, so I'm excited to see what it's about. It's like um, it reminds I don't know for sure, but you know the little um, choose your own adventure kind of books uh, yeah, that they yeah. used to come out in the '80s. So I know it probably won't be that format, but uh, just the idea of having those little novels, uh, I think, is cool. So I know it's I'm nice excited to see like what these characters are about in the classified world. You know. There's, there's obviously like the because it's it's aimed at a younger a, a like mm-hmm. audience. It's, it's aimed. I'm guessing at like a kind of teenager kind of vibe here, yeah. like young like adult. Us. Yeah, exactly yeah. like us. Uh, I'd, I'd actually be probably in the eight, like range, <laughs> eight to eight years old is where I would be. Um, but yeah, that you know, that obviously there's that in- incorporation of kids in the book that again they're mm-hmm. going to be interacting with these characters so uh, again like that it's not aimed at us but again i'm still interested in, in getting more i guess right. universe for the mm-hmm. classified figures built up so it could be 256 pages of like text versions of the psas uh from the cartoon because the <laughs> kids burning themselves and barbecue running in and telling them not to not to do that when the parents are at home Doc, but weirdly standing outside the bathroom window <laughs> Like, that was the weirdest one. He's just like, they're going, hey, guys. Just happened like, to be hanging around. What are you doing outside my bathroom window, you freak? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of that. But, um, no, I know. It, it could be really cool. So, you know, it did remind me a little bit of the concept of, like, having teens and having the Joes come in and, like, help these teens. It's not exactly one for one, but uh, that rumored mask uh, idea yeah. where it was going to be, like, teens or something that were going to be... So um, maybe that's kind of the sort of vibe they're going for. It might not be like yeah. one for one, but because the Joes are more adults and they're helping the kids. But I still think uh, maybe it has that kind of vibe. Too. No, definitely. And and that whenever anything comes up where it's like the, these kids get involved, I always think of that mask description. But then also prior to that, Power Rangers and any Power Rangers yeah, recent right. stuff, because it's always been about kids coming into this thing and then yeah there you go so obviously it makes more sense in a power rangers capacity because they become friggin power rangers sure. so uh, it'd be nice to, if the kids do become joes great <laughs> Could you? i mean you got to get a younger audience into joe yeah. otherwise um when you know we're we're not young people anymore even though we act that way so like what happens when we're gone 40. does the brand is the brand just dead 40 so, going on eight years old yeah. i am so all right, all right. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's a very good point, and uh, you feel like there is more of a push, or at least elements of the brand are going in those directions. So, mm-hmm. you know, maybe they are, maybe they are making that clear distinction now, and like trying to do new things going forward, which we just mm-hmm. have to kind of accept. We've we've had a good run. Right. I'm saying this like we're not going to enjoy what's coming next, but no, I like, mean it's not I'm like they've abandoned. Yeah, they haven't abandoned everything. You know what I mean? It's not like. Like we definitely want to see new characters for sure. Yeah. But they they haven't like wiped the board clean and started over because there's too much equity in those characters. So they just got to do little twists of storyline to keep it relevant for people. And I may not like every one of them, but that's okay. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna like everything. It's just exactly. I didn't like everything originally anyway. That's I don't know if I, anybody did. I did. Um, especially Armadillo. even even. The, uh... <laughs> I think I, I would take the Armadillo over barge, uh, the the, uh, um, the uh, st- Star Dudes. <laughs> I see. I loved Star Brigade. Star Dudes. I don't know. Star Dudes. But this is the thing. Everyone can have that. You know, anyone mm-hmm. can be like, oh, this is what I like about it, and this is what I don't like right. about it. Exactly. Um, what we don't do is we don't hit on things uh, if someone does like it, guys. You know what? Because it, it only makes you look bad, to be honest. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> as adults if an eight-year-old wants to complain i'll be like all right he's eight years old go ahead yeah and many of them do right uh <laughs> like, 
you, well yeah all right fair enough we've we've done our fair share of complaining speaking of which <laughs> let's move on to the in titans news Seems, seems apt uh, yeah, with, with Titans. Nice segue. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Uh, about six months ago, we saw images of three G.I. Joe Titan-class figures on a shelf in a store and then nothing for ages, for six months. Well, earlier this week, His Tank reported that the G.I. Joe Titan-class figures are being distributed across the globe to less fortunate markets and included a number of new product shots for the figures. These very basic 9.5 inch size toys are aimed at a younger audience for a crash and bash play pattern, sorry that's easy for me to say, and towards kids from developing countries for affordability. The first wave includes Duke, Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow and it is not clear if there will be any more figures to come after these. Each figure comes with one accessory weapon, Duke gets his blaster, and Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow get a sword each. It's not yet known if we will see these figures again in the US, but I would imagine a number of discount stores will pick them up and they may even find their way into Targets and Walmarts, etc. If we find out, we will let you know. Paul, what are your thoughts on Titans in general? What are, you, what are they, what, like five POA? They're like 12 inches? Who are these for? They're not for me, I easy pass. Like, did I cover everything? Yeah, perfect. Uh, oh, oh perfect. They, we haven't even gotten an air tight in the classified line and they're making these? Like, it's another good one. Yeah, I covered all the bases. Yeah, no, they're yeah. uh, they're fine. They're fine. They're for kids. They're for people who uh, ever you stated everybody that they're for. They're not for me. They're not for you. So they're not um, for me. But I want them. Isn't that weird? It is weird. Uh, I would maybe get them out of curiosity if I had the space for because they're twelve inch, right? They're nine and a half inches or nine and a half inches. So exact. almost. Right. So they're In huge. Fact, they're, they're classified as Titans by official Hasbro nomenclature but um when it comes to the titans in in the past they've all been like 12 inch figures so these are more like mm. i believe they're more like that because the, there are more of these ab- around in discount stores for marvel yeah. and star wars right. and so on and so forth so yeah you're talking nine and a half inches roughly uh definitely not 12 inch which is quite right. an important distinction because a lot of people were complaining about it kind of maybe ruining the legacy of 12 inch which is a bit wild See, to say I something just, like that that's what i like i had seen that right so that's kind of where i was coming from like it doesn't it's not just because something is the same it, let's say it's 12 inch let's for the sake of argument just pretend they're 12 inch for a second just because something is the same height as something else does not ruin the legacy if i'm if I'm pretty sure, uh, aren't Funko Pops uh, three and three quarter inch or close to it, four they've, inch? They've ruined the legacy of every so they've, toy. So they've ruined <laughs> the O-ring line because they're the same height. Like, I don't, it doesn't make any damn sense. What's, yeah, see, so the original 88 Storm Shadow is ruined. The legacy's done. Like, it doesn't make any sense. These are obviously, like, and like what you said, they make them for Marvel Legends and they make them, so you have to, like, think realistically and think logically if hasbro set up production for figures at certain sizes and certain like articulation levels and certain price points yeah for other toy lines that they make that they have licenses for and then gi joe's coming up and they're trying to build that out and and get as many different price points and many different placement as possible for the yeah. toys or are they just going to avoid it because it's too close to a 12 inch figure that was made in the 60s and 70s absolutely absolutely Uh, i also kind of feel like you know by that logic what are the other 12 inch options out there what are they doing you know like three Mm -hmm. zero is doing a 12 inch you know figure like that's like that you so that's covered you know you've got some pretty awesome 12 inch stuff still going on like hot toys you know we still got amazing hot toys stuff from like retaliation we still, you know, so, you know, I don't think necessarily 12 inches dead because nine and a half Titans figures appear on the market, but no, that's just me. Us, you I can, you could literally make a 12 inch Titan figure and make a 12 inch articulated figure for adults. And it's, they don't have to cross over at all. It just because of this roughly the same heights. These are just different toys for different people for different price points. And they yeah. have to do that in order to bring new people into the brand uh and and let the brand grow and make money because you know capitalism i mean that's the point of a corporation is to make money so they have to do this stuff also i would say as well it's a good it's almost like a little gateway drug for any of the really youngins getting in on these figures yeah. isn't it like i mean right. they're just going to be looking at their their parents like classified collection and just going mm-hmm. like bash these together for a bit but i'm gonna i'm moving up to those soon right <laughs> give me a year right. i'll be there 
<laughs> What's the price point on these? I believe they're nine ninety nine each. Okay, so they're they're cheaper than even the movie figs that are smaller because they have less articulation and less paint and all that stuff. About so the same, it makes yeah. sense. Like what do they call it? Bash and whatever? Cra- crash, crash and bash? And, crash and bash play pattern. Yeah. So yeah, these are just for slamming them into rocks, basically. I'm not I gonna mean, be that's... doing that with my classified <laughs> figures, can I say? I'm right. not gonna be I'm not even gonna be doing it with these Titan figures. If I get them, they'll just be like, There you go, big big hunking great chunky thing in a box, done. But anyway, yeah, that's so I mean, there you go, that's Titan class figures covered. Um <laughs> Let's let's move on to even more merch news now, uh, and this time in Domes news. Now I'll preface this as well quickly by saying that when we did report on this, I'd mentioned that it was a, a reveal, uh, and in actual fact, this has been out since February of uh, this year. It's just I certainly didn't see it. A lot of people didn't see it. I don't think even his tank saw it, and his tank are usually on this. Uh, and they hadn't seen this out there. But then I, when I posted the, the news burst about this Domes box set, which I'm about to cover in a second, just in case you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about, uh, Brian Sauer, who does our graphics, messaged me and said, you know, I've had two of those sets in my possession for the last three weeks. And I'm like, oh, right. So, you know, we even make mistakes here on the full force. So don't, I mean, listen to us, but don't always take everything we say. <laughs> <laughs> do your looking, own research yeah do your own <laughs> research no, i'm kidding uh so anyway just with that said quite a few months back we reported on the brand new jazzwares gi joe domes figures consisting of blind box ver- blind box versions of duke snake eyes roadblock destro storm shadow cobra commander and a special snake supreme deco cobra commander with cape on a gold base chase figure well Amazon currently have an awesome box set including Duke, Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow and Cobra Commander in a very cool display box with vintage artwork and it is in stock for $14.99 right now. I believe that was really the news. Uh, Of course you might still need to get some of the blind boxes if you want to complete the set but it's pretty cool nonetheless. We have links in the description below if you feel like adding to your already heaving G.I. Joe purchases this month. Paul. No. (laughs) Are you into G.I. Joe? Not into these? No, no, I, I'm not like I, I we mentioned pr- prior to recording. I mean, the box is the box is sweet. Um, maybe I get it for the box because yeah, the box is actually really that, nice, to be honest. Well, yeah. I like the uh, the fold out uh, the cover of GI Joe One on the inside there. Yeah, that's but, really um, nice too. Yeah. So uh, maybe for the box I get a set, but I don't like we mentioned before we start recording. I don't I don't own any Funko Pops. I don't really get into like the statue stuff yeah um, yeah so again not, i don't not, have a lot I'm... of room for extra uh extraneous stuff so um yeah i don't think i'll, I'll do these but they're cool to have them out there more brand more brand stuff out there for people that do like this i mean there's people that i know that are uh designers and um they you know work in e-com or whatever they have desk toys right so they don't collect toys otherwise but they collect yes. toys for their desk and that includes things like this funko pops reaction figures and, and they are everywhere all over their desk those uh for those people these are great yeah totally the, the, the fun little blind, kind of blind box thing um when they first actually came out as blind boxes hot topic had them i think for pre-order individually for about five dollars something like really reduced uh, like mm-hmm. on a special offer, they're a little bit more expensive now. I think they were close to like seven or ten bucks now, probably even more than that. And if you want to get the actual blind box, you'll just have to find them in the wild now, I think, uh, or go on like you know, I don't want to say it, but eBay, what, and um, places like that. But What's this that? little bo- this little box set is really cute. And when I saw it on there, I was like, oh, that's really sweet. And it's only fourteen ninety nine. So if you are interested, it's jump on cheap. it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, a bit of fun there as well. But anyway, I kind of just wanted really just to clarify that. Even though we reported it was a brand new reveal, it had been out since February, or it had been on Amazon since February. And I didn't notice that as well when I was doing the burst, but then I thought, well, maybe this is the first time seeing it. And no, it's not. I hadn't seen them either, you know. I've searched Under just the for G.I. Joe on Amazon, and I didn't see these pop up. Well, the, so. the, the, annoyingly, the blind boxes were pretty well known, and uh, but I didn't know about that. Anyway, I feel bad, and it's sorted now, so we can move on. Uh, and this is a really cool, actually, the next the next segment's a really nice bit of news, actually, and that is concept art news. Mm-hmm. 
Talented illustrator John Gallagher has shared a number of behind-the-scenes pieces on his Facebook page for his G.I. Joe Classified Do Cart, which saw use on the G.I. Joe website and also in other media. The artwork shows a few pencil sketches and renders of the Joe's first sergeant before the actual piece was finalised. He also shared a very cool internal deco sheet for Duke, which shows the figure with tattoos on his forearms. This is a very cool addition and also shows the amount of deco operations on the actual classified figure. It's awesome, isn't it, mate? Just to see that kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Paul, what were your thoughts about the about the art? You know, the, we, we, I'm, I'm, I love it when they post concept art stuff. So for me, this was really fun. How, how did you feel about it? Oh yeah, for sure. I anytime I see concept art, whether it's from the past or present, I'm 100% uh, into it. I'm really curious uh, the, seeing the classified stuff because it gives you a window into their thought process and the mm. creative process into uh, creating these characters, you know, and picking the color palettes and all that stuff. So I'm, I'm, I think that's really cool. The Seeing the deco for like tattoos and stuff, it's cool that they're thinking about that. We yeah. know Roadblock had one and we, we know that whenever they get around to doing Storm Shadow, he's going to have yeah. some sort of sleeve or I something. I would love uh, it if they do the that. Art. I love that sleeve tattoo on Storm Shadow, that Storm Shadow design. I really hope they do go forward with that. I, they do. I hope they do and they don't just update the artwork <laughs> without the sleeve because <laughs> they didn't end up doing the sleeve on the figure. But uh, no, I think that's really cool. I wasn't feeling it on Duke, though. Yeah. I'm like, I, a bit busy, a bit busy, isn't it? Yeah, a couple reasons. One, he, he's only showing the forearms, so it's... It's kind of weird, like, well, that's the only skin, so we'll cram in some, some uh, decos there. Like, if he was going to have a tattoo on his forearm, the way his, uh, his sleeve is rolled, I could see seeing part of it and yeah. not the whole thing or not multiples. Uh, plus, it's Duke. I don't see, I, we don't know, classified, how they're going to portray him. He has a scar now. So it's like, uh, like everyone Flint has does. a scar. And, Every and, single and Timber figure does. has a scar. <laughs> and, and, and apparently, Snake Eyes probably has scars. Oh, man. So um, I don't know if still unless they portray him differently like way different he'd be the most clean cut dude in the lineup so far he'd be the least likely to get a tattoo uh like that on a forearm to me he'd have, um, a, he'd, I, have a, I, he'd have a tramp stamp on his back wouldn't he yeah, a tribal uh tramp stamp from the late 90s <laughs> <laughs> just a bad decision after after a night of drinking but i like i like the tattoo art designs like i could see those as patches it'd be kind of mm. cool to get a a patch or something a, a deco on the figures um like they did for lady j's got her patch you know what i mean so totally totally i, I agree with you as well i think the uh you, you can see that they obviously they were going through that process and then they probably you know lenny or whoever decided against it and was like let's let's just go clean on this and i'm kind of glad they did um but it's always really cool to see this stuff and whenever i see any concept stuff that slightly differs from what we actually what, what we got that I, sometimes I feel like, oh, I wish they'd done that. And sometimes I feel like I see why they haven't done it, but, it, you know, completely don't mind if they did. And then other times I'm like, I'm just glad they didn't do it. In this case, right. I'm not like fully against the tattoos on Duke, but I totally understand the reasons why they didn't do it. And like you say, very much, he's more like a man of business, isn't he? Like just kind mm -hmm. of like focus. And this is what I'm not saying that people that have tattoos don't have that. But like you feel right. like he just would never get the time to do that because he's just always he's, thinking about being a Boy Scout. Yeah, he's, he's a Boy Scout. He's clean cut, you know. And if you're gonna have guys in the line, right, that are, uh, you know, Roblox got a tattoo, Storm Shadow might have tattoos. Other characters could be a little, you know, if you did a Footloose, maybe Footloose is like, you know, his persona. Maybe he's got a big like uh, uh, Grateful Dead tattoo on his forearm. Exactly. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But those guys, you need a foil to that, right? So you can't have everybody kind of be. A tat, Gung Ho like has a tattoo as well. We can't, right. So you need a clean cut them. guy yeah, yeah. to make the non clean cut guys seem cooler. If totally. You know totally. At. No, I agree with that. Totally. And again, like tattoos don't have the same stigma they used to, like, you know, 10 right. years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. <laughs> I don't have ago. a single tattoo. I refuse. Oh, I don't either. I just I, kinda feel like I'm too old now and uh I feel like it's more unique not to have a tattoo these days than I, it, like I, it, it I, reverse. I must admit, I've I've always thought it'd be really cool to have them, but I just never got around to it. Just never got around to it. And I I I've got friends that have got some of the most incredible art on their bodies. Like my, mm. my mate Ian, um he probably won't mind me shouting him out because he, he has no idea I even probably do this. But he has the most incredible samurai tattoo on his inner side here over his rib cage all down there mm -hmm. and he said that was the probably the most painful one he's ever had done oh on the rib cage it's, sure. it's, it's a full-size samurai kind of like it's full force? incredible 
full force. Yes. Love it. Yeah, I have uh, a friend of my, my girlfriend's friend uh, is a, t- a tattoo artist, and he travels all over the country doing tattoos. And Brilliant. her and his girlfriend's her best friend. She's got full sleeves, and they look really cool. It's just um, I would have to like design my own, and then a week later I'd hate it, and I'd wish I had never <laughs> exactly, gotten it. Exactly. Exactly. So. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, again, like love love them. Don't have a problem with them, but uh, yeah, right. from a personal point of view, just never got around to it. Never mm-hmm. got around to it. Um, and and now I'd probably maybe even contemplate it now but it's like it seems so like such a unnecessary like you know frivolous like pay, like thing to pay for right now like just yeah oh. so to be I honest i could spend that money on more toys yeah exactly let's just let's just buy toys with tattoos on them instead uh anyway yeah so that is uh that is john gallagher's art and uh, one thing i will mention actually on that is i loved the renders <laughs> And the, the black and whites were nice as well, but mm-hmm. the renders of the ones that he did, like the, the front on and that kind of like yep. side one that was kind of rejigged a little bit to be more kind of cleaner and a bit smoother mm-hmm. for the for the website. I loved how they looked. Yeah, I like the process uh, right up from like sketch to final. So all that stuff looks great. Yeah, I hope we get more of that as. Uh time goes on that's yeah i would love to see loads more of this stuff coming out anyway right let's move on then and in chalk line apparel news so chalk line apparel revealed a new pair of gi joe shorts and a brand new cobra commander retro fanimation jacket earlier in the week and the pre-orders went up on their website at 12 p.m est on friday we guess. Seeing as we're recording this prior to the actual drop, you'll have to excuse us if they reveal any other new items. If they do, I will be showing them up on the screen just in case, and if not, I'll cut all of this out and you will never know. And never knowing is not half of the non-battle. I'm leaving all that in anyway, no matter what. Um, Because we just checked, and it was just the jacket and the shorts. So, um, yeah, not much to really talk about here, but what do you think of that Fanimation jacket with Cobra Commander all over it? I like the art. Uh obviously but i wouldn't uh that's not me at all (laughs) there's no way i could rock that there's no way i could rock that and take myself seriously you see i would definitely rock that definitely it would work for you i can't pull it off so i would get laughed off the streets so (laughs) so would i (laughs) but i'd still i'd wear i'd be wearing it going i wonder why they're laughing um (laughs) i wonder why all these people are laughing and looking at me um i must admit like i know this is not the same because uh, this is different companies but i got the bait 1000 toys alpha industries jacket which uh, was the gi joe the kind of reversible duke art one which i love i love that jacket where i wore it the other day as well actually but i also got the bumblebee one from the bumblebee movie which is like bright yellow on one side oh i didn't bumblebee. see that one and on the interior it's the g1 box art like the space scene with like star scream and optimus oh, that, Prime on the stuff, inside the toy art it is so you're you're wearing that art around your body all all the time outstanding and i wore that i wore both those jackets for assembly required which we'll talk about a bit later on a couple of years back every time i wear them i get people coming up to me saying i love the jacket dude but thankfully it's because we're in like uh we, we go right. to the um obviously the convention but then also we go to this arcade bar called up down oh yeah okay. and obviously people in there are just all nerds aren't they let's face it and so we're like playing like turtles next men and the gi joe game and all that kind of stuff in there and people are just coming up to me saying i love the jacket and i'm like thanks i hope you didn't just pickpocket me while you told me that because that's what you feel like you feel like people are only coming up to you to kind of do a slight mm-hmm. you know steal kind of maneuver but that's yeah really harsh anyway um yeah i, I do like this jacket hector greedo inspired uh, card art on there as well mm-hmm. which is nice um and yeah i think it's kind of fun and kind of crazy i'm not going to be picking these up though probably is it the actual Greedo stuff, or is it like the 25th Redo uh, art? It's hard to say, because I think they may have done some things to it themselves anyway. I think it's gone through some sort of, like, you know, graphic design filter anyway. Mm-hmm. So, okay. inspired by Greedo, possibly 25th art, whatever they have at hand for Cobra Commander right now, uh, and then obviously run through the old graphic design filter before, like, the press the design button. And, <laughs> design um, and done. Done. Yeah. Sorted. Uh, but yeah, uh, liking that. Anyway, moving on then, because uh, we don't really need to kind of keep talking about that. Um, and in E1 news. Yeah. 
Gabriel Murano has been put in charge of overseeing the Hasbro intellectual properties at Entertainment One, which include Transformers, Power Rangers, and of course, G.I. Joe. Murano will also be the executive VP of scripted television at E1. It's quite the undertaking considering all of the IPs at Hasbro, not to mention the ridiculous amount of projects underway at the company. We wish him all the luck in his, in his new job and look forward to seeing what he can do with the G.I. Joe brand in particular. Paul, are you excited about all these possible new projects of happening at Entertainment One at the moment? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I think we need uh, some Joe content, and I'm hoping that's in the mix sooner than later. Um, so I don't know if it's dependent on like how well the movie does, depending on like how what the priority is for E1 is. So I'm hoping the movie does well enough that they're like, okay, we we definitely gotta put Joe on our priority or maybe they're already working on something hopefully so well, apparently, um, a cartoon of some sort last, know, would be great last time we last time we reported on this which was a number of months back E1 were working on 65 individual projects okay for Hasbro IPs so 60, 64 Joe projects in yeah, one Transformers and one Transformers right, movie yeah that's you know, that's just how it is nowadays. G.I. Joe is, is the, is yeah, the it's bigger, number one. It's the bigger priority, isn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, it's on no, a new no, level. Well, it's, it's Lady... <laughs> no, no level. I'm on a new uh, level. Is, I, know, no level. I, I didn't have any idea till you told me what he was saying there. I was oh, like, right, what is cool. that? I remember I sent you the message. I'm like, what is what he is saying here? It's just like, and I'm like, and what then, is that? And then and I said it back to you, but in the same way. And you're like, I still don't understand what you're saying. I, I have no <laughs> idea what that is. So... Uh, oh, Lady J, is that E1? Well, uh, it's going to be under the, um, I suppose, the direction because ev- all pro- all projects that Hasbro IPs, television, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, do like go under that that banner. Okay. But I believe that's also Skydance and and all sorts of different yeah. You'd have multiple well. partners yeah, w- yeah. producing, yeah. But that would be cool. So like a mix of live action and definitely like some sort of cartoon. Yeah, I think we need animated. Don't have we? to happen. Yeah, definitely it has I, to happen. I think a classified animated show would be dope, man. I think that would yeah. be so cool. Yeah, I mean, look at like all the other ones that are coming out. You know, Imagine the Universe has two different cartoons coming out, right? Greed. So we, that's just greedy. Can we, can we just get one? Yeah. Can we just get one of these guys seriously? Like um, even if it's like a mini series, that'd be cool. Like a Tiger Force mini series. Oh, European exclusive Tiger Force mini series. What <laughs> makes no sense whatsoever? Uh, just over in Europe, and the that's the only place that they run it. Um, yeah. in Denmark. Ex- yeah. I would be. In, I'd be up for that. Just a Denmark TV show. Let's <laughs> let's do it. I want to see it in Danish. I don't want any subtitles. I want to yep. not know what's going on the whole time. Um, yeah. So that's. You know, happening at E1, Gabriel Morano. Good luck to him in in that job. Mm-hmm. It's got to be a difficult. Don't mess it up. Oh, Mate, yeah, you've got a lot of people, a lot of people no counting on you right now. <laughs> yeah, what is that from airplane? Yeah, good luck. I just want to let you know we're all counting on you. <laughs> it's a hospital. What is it? It's, it's a big building. It's a place a where, where patients and doctors are. <laughs> That's not important right now. Um, right, <laughs> let's let's move on from one of the funniest movies ever to uh more news and this time this is we've been wanting to talk about this this is huge speculation news is it possible that we could be getting the battle android trooper and ali viper in the classified line next well it's a pretty solid possibility after these images of said characters heads and an ali viper shield showed up on instagram on thursday now, we've known about two code words for a while now, Big Rig and Diamondback, which are also known as Apollo and Satellite, and we could be looking at the two characters that fill those code words. We might be jumping to conclusions here, of course, but I think it's very likely that that's what we are looking at here. Another interesting aspect to the image is showing the parts taken from a dumpster at an Asian factory, if everything is to be believed. The bat has battle damage in much the same way as some of the 4-inch modern figures did. It's all very exciting if legitimate. Paul, what are your thoughts on these? I am super excited if these are real. Mm. So um, when I first saw them, I'm like, well, a dumpster, like, it, this could be fake. But then I saw the shield and I'm like, well... I mean, this is if somebody made these, they're really good at what they do, and they shouldn't be just uh, they should be working for Hasbro, you know what I mean, or someone else. So, I believe they're they are really well for, done. I believe they are working for Hasbro in, in a roundabout way here, right? I, I so, do, th- I feel like they are legitimate, and I'll only say that because mm-hmm. of a couple of things. One, the, the bat head does resemble the yeah. Operation Blackout style battle android trooper, and because of that. 
it's making me think, well, we know that the Alley Viper has been on the cards for a long period of time since we saw the card art day one. Mm-hmm. Um, on the back of the packaging, on the website, it's it's a character that uh, it's almost been like the the worst kept secret in uh, GI Joe Classified. Oh. Which let's face yeah. it, there's been a few of those. Um, Storm but, Shadow, yep, yeah, Storm Shadow version <laughs> one. Um, so I think that just by th- those kind of kind of situations, the fact that the bat appears in Operation Blackout quite ridiculously all the time, the mm-hmm. fact that it does resemble a little bit the head does resemble the Operation Blackout model. And the fact that the Alley Viper, it just there's just so many things here that point to it being legit. Not confirmed yeah. yet, obviously that that won't happen until we right. know until there's a fan first Friday that reveals a bat and an, an Alley Viper, um, mm-hmm. which you know we could be waiting a long time for. But right now, it's nice to speculate this stuff because some cool aspects to this. One, obviously, there's the clips on the side of the head for the Alley Viper, so we know that that visor's come in. We've seen right. the art; it's going to look like that, isn't it? Yeah, it's gonna and and uh, it's a little different, you know. It's got the little. It looks like in the art, there's like that single port in the center uh, to be able to see through because the original one didn't have that. The original one was supposed to come down below the eyes, according yes, to the yes, art. Yes, yes. But however they made it, it just made a blind. But no, it's I like think a blast that's cool. shield, wasn't it? Basically, that's what yeah, it was, it was like, like a blast shield. <laughs> Close the blast doors. I can't see. Uh, yeah, right. So uh, that's cool and. You know, the bats, I'm hoping it's a mu- the multiple heads would be like kind of the first real multiple head classified. You have the non-damaged version and the and the damaged version. You're forgetting um, you're forgetting I, you're forgetting a couple of uh, multiple heads that are gonna be coming out soon in Henry Golding and uh Oh right and I don't, Andrew Koji. You don't count them because they're not I don't, real. They're they're movie line, <laughs> so I don't the movie line to me is like kind of a separate thing, even though it's sure. in the classified line. Sure. Um I don't I consider them like a separate thing. But then, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So my only hope is, and I Luke probably Skywalker. Gonna, it's probably not going to go my way. But I'm like, I really hope they don't use the bat body in the video game because it it just looks like 2001 generic robot guy uh, video game guy. You know what I mean? It, it does. It, a, the original it, yeah. bat was like clothed, which is ridiculous. But that's what makes it awesome as well. I kind of want the closed regular bats guy. What I like about the Battle Android Trooper Vintage is the fact, yeah, that you're talking about the clothes, but what that strikes me is that they 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 got a certain level in the in the build of bats, like in in my head canon, uh, where they were gonna do like you know cyborgs. They were gonna have like human faces yeah. and so on and so forth. But they got to that yep. point in the build where they're like, this is costing mm. too much, right. and they just went with what they had, which was these. <laughs> clothed bodies which would have had like a real head real hands and you know that kind of stuff yeah. that's what i feel like cobra were doing in my head canon yep uh, and that's what it's it's almost to insinuate that it's always it's, it's the bat is a work in progress basically right you know yeah i also liked in a cartoon or in the comic books that when you're shooting up bats not that it would happen with a plastic figure unless you had soft goods but the clothes got all torn up and, and torn away which made the bats look even crazier more zombie like because yes shredded clothes missing limbs and they're still moving whereas just like a straight up robot's just like anybody could do that you know I, yeah. I can't think of another property where androids are clothed in this way like uh in any other real property terminator. maybe there is terminator. yeah terminator maybe but it's not common right no, so no, i think that's one of the things that make the bats and diego so iconic in their look so I'm hoping and that's the other we thing, get that. The, the iconography of that is important as well. Like, you know, if, if you're just doing a generic, um, like, robot, it does just kind of melds into the, the robot character background, yep. doesn't it? Yeah, so right. I, I, I agree with that as well. I think um, I'd be really happy to see some sort of, like, you know, coming together of the two aspects there, where it's like if they have to go close to the Operation Blackout design, which I'm again, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a crap design. I, I just agree with you that it's not as, it's not as iconic, and it's certainly right. more generic. Uh, mm-hmm. And obviously, for a computer game, that makes more sense if you're dealing with sprite, loads of sprites that are blown up on screen all the time. You, yeah. If you can make a lot of generic characters, then that's what you, that's what you're going to do. So possibly, and I hope they go a little bit closer to the vintage. But in terms of the Alley Viper, I think we're going to get something very special there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't wait for that. I mean, the, you already—he's already an iconic-looking character, and according to the box art, he's the color scheme's pretty much what it was. Beautiful. So you're, it's not like because they've repainted the Alley Viper a thousand times, but the original one is still. When I think Alley Viper, yeah, I, I mean, think orange. I think, most blue. people, yeah. 
yeah. Yeah, the, the, so you could blend into the, the urban environment. <laughs> the orange oh, and blue is perfect. Obviously. So just in case you're in front of that billboard for Nerf, the Nerf billboard, yeah. oh, you can't Stand in front of a graffiti wall and you're good. Done. Yeah, perfect. Um, no, but I love that look. And yeah, I, I do. It's, it's I glorious. I hope that's what we're getting. It's glorious. And um, also one thing I will mention is on the shield, um, obviously the original <laughs> shield had the, the, the uh, window cut out of it so you could right. see through it. Um, on this new version, there's no actual window hole but there is on the interior a screen like a like a like a rectangle screen i wonder if they're going to go the route of like video like it's a video feed like so they can see what's going on as they're using the shield you know Mm -hmm. rather than a cut out hole it's going to be kind of updated into that classified style and you're going to get some sort of tampo on the more tech yeah could you imagine like a little tampo with some like readouts and stuff and like a little Mm -hmm. bit of oh that would be so cool yeah like it's even funnier on the vintage on the original one they had to cut out the c out of but you had your visor down you're blind anyway so the cutout doesn't matter (laughs) so isn't the the cut out lower on the shield as well so they'd have to lift up yeah and therefore yeah yeah. they're gonna get shot anyway it's it's you know it's it was still fun you know so oh, uh, but no this figures. is one of my favorite figures in the vintage line for sure yeah this is gonna be really awesome so i hope we get a reveal sooner than later like i'm hoping we find out sometime in the next few months you know it's I not like dragging on to christmas i wouldn't know? hold your breath but i would suggest that if you look at the pattern if you look at well yeah don't don't do that anyway but if you're looking at <laughs> no no don't if you're looking at the pattern of releases over, you know, the the, the last year and, and so on of, mm-hmm. of actual classified stuff, you'll notice that there's there are patterns and they, they come out for certain periods of time in the year. The reveal's usually like two or three months before the actual, like, mm-hmm. you know, kind of shipping date or something like that. So you're probably looking at, not certainly not in Yojo june but if the next batch which you'd have you'd be figured you figure would be like later in the year Mm -hmm. you're looking at um a reveal you know more likely in august or september and so on and so forth so okay that's that's what i would probably be expecting um that that makes sense i mean we're almost to july anyway so it's only a couple months down the road exactly exactly uh, and even if it was more like September and even October, then that, again, we're getting regular stuff. And I, I've noticed mm-hmm. a lot of people, like, having a go at Yojo June. We didn't get anything. <laughs> but, like, okay, I, 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 I don't, I, I understand and I don't understand. I think the expectation levels have been raised slightly yeah. too much here. Because it, look at last year's Yojo June. Yeah. It's literally just a post a day of G.I. Mm-hmm. Joe related things. It doesn't have to be a reveal. It was always things like, you know, like a jokey post right. for the day or like, you know, like, you know, like a video clip or an, a, an episode up on YouTube or that kind of thing. Minimal things that it could spread out over a month. There's no yeah. way we're getting multiple, multiple classified reveals every couple of weeks, you know? It's not just classified though. Like if they're revealing, they've revealed more things for the Joe brand in this first few weeks of uh june than check they did the, last check june check the, the, the issue was if you don't believe us <laughs> yeah it's just like everyone's like i just want classified everything else or i just want retro or i want retro and classified but nothing else but that's not how you run a brand no you just can't do it uh that's not how you you do it so the other part of it is they need to license it out to other people to make more money to to get the brand footing to be able to do more, more classifieds i mean it's just the way business works i know it sucks it's not the way i would like it to be done but that's reality yeah uh, but you're not going to have reveals like you do for marvel legends or star wars right now because it's it's a smaller brand and um it needs to hit certain goals in order to get I, I've really written out. I've written out every post, Joe-related post, and official partner release reveal, etc., down on a list, and it is mind-blowing this month. Absolutely mind-blowing. And we've got perfect segue. Yet another merchandise aspect to talk about next in Diamond Select Toys News. Earlier in the week, Diamond Select Toys teased that they would be revealing pre-orders for a number of brands, including G.I. Joe. Well, earlier today, which is technically Friday, even though you're watching this on a Saturday, (laughs) they released pre-orders for their brand new Snake Eyes and Timber Gallery diorama statue. 
The 11 inch tall and 10 and a half inch wide statue features version 2 snake eyes with his trusty wolf timber leaping off a snowy ledge about to bring the pain on some unsuspecting cobra lackey. Wielding his classic sword, the statue comes in at $49.99, is available to pre-order now, link in the description, and will be shipping in November of this year. Paul, do you like these statues and will you be getting this one? I think it looks amazing. Um, I don't I don't go in for statues, I just Same don't have the room. Yeah. Yeah, it's but crazy. uh but I think this one is one of the better statues I've seen. I love the way they kind of nailed the snake eyes the 85 snake eyes look here. Looking at the helmet like the mask here, it just makes me want the movie to look more that way. You know <laughs> what I mean? I'm just like god, I wish it looked more like that. But it is what it is. Uh but I I just if I had room, I would totally get it, but I don't. So uh, I'm kind of with you on that one. I think this is one of the most... When you get real up close and personal with some of the images, the the detail on the panels and the texture on all the different mm-hmm. like aspects of the suit, really, really nice. And yeah, it's, it's a really like gorgeous diorama statue. And um, it's obviously they've done the Destro ones already. They've done the kind of Destro un, un, in the sewer kind of getting shot at. And then also a complete repaint, including the water of the sewer, um, in the, the the profit director deco, so um, they've they've been doing they've been kicking out some really nice statues. And again, if I were a statue guy, which I ain't, again, it's a lot down to space. I know a lot of guys out there that are, and they love these things, and they've got them all over the place, and that's great. Um, obviously, they wouldn't be doing them <laughs> if they didn't have <laughs> you know right. an audience, a target here, demographic, and. I can imagine the diorama ones are going to look sensational next to each other in like, you know, in a row. For sure. Yeah, if you have like a long collection shelf or a display case, having these in there all next to each other would be a pretty amazing sight. I can't wait to see what else they're going to kind of pull out here because I, I, I would, I'm fingers crossed they do a Storm of Shadow in his V2 because I think that would be so oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. So cool. I don't think there's enough. That would be. There's not enough Storm Shadow version 2 paraphernalia out there i know we've just i've just i just got a funko pop and i should be happy but Mm -hmm. i'm talking like we need like more figures we need more we need classified we definitely need a classified blooming digital camo yeah i hope that's on the horizon at some point and now it is interesting they did the ninja force version and they put them did they put them they put them in a cobra box right the back background was Cobra? I would have to I check because I, yeah, I can't, can't remember. remember. I would have noticed if they didn't. I would have already called that out. But he has no Cobra logos on him. And we all know he was a Joe by then. So I kind of hope they do that if they do the version 2 that he's like a Joe. And I know a lot of people don't like that but I, I love that story arc. I love him going yeah, from bad guy to, to Joe. But he wasn't like in the comic, he wasn't like showing up at GI Joe headquarters and taking on missions. He was just his like, kind of like own rogue agent, yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah, a freelancer. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I, lo- I love that aspect of him. It is a Cobra background, yes. Okay, but he has no Cobra logos on him, right? No, just the I, Arashikage. I think they symbol. just went with Arashikage on this one, didn't they? Which is uh, again an, uh, a good good move because what it does is it means that you can use that as a ninja force, and not have to yep. worry about you know the Cobra emblems on him, exactly. Or anything like that, which is really yeah. really neat. Um, and I get why they put him in the Cobra box as well, because, you right. know, for, you know, for, for obvious reasons, yep. I'm just looking at my classified. I've got like a couple of different, I've got like three separate kind of displays with classified figures in it. Cause there are that many bloody figures out. I'm saying that like, it's a bad thing. They're, they're all Roblox. What are you talking about? I've got like one, dis- <laughs> three, two of the displays are all Roblox and the yeah. other display are the rest <laughs> of the figures. Um, but there's, I've got like a display with all the, the bad guy characters like all you know within mm-hmm. like a look kind of sexy posing kind of thing storm shadow is in the middle of that and he is blazing out like he's he's really like a gorgeous looking figure my mm-hmm. only my only problem with him is that lower shin splint uh, articulation not being there which really yeah. is one of the saddest things about that figure like it's because it's so a ninja good, right you kind of want yeah and you can't do a lot of the things that you can do with like snake eyes and yeah. All the other, ca- all literally, all the other f- characters in the line. Yeah, it's a bummer. I'm hoping, uh, you know, the the future Storm Shadows we get uh, definitely have it. So yeah. maybe it's just that figure. Fingers we'll crossed. On, fingers crossed on that one. Anyway, beautiful, beautiful statue from Diamond Select Toys. Link in the description if you want to pick that up, buddy. Let's get to the shout outs and finish this massive episode, shall we? Yeah. 
right i'll let, let you go first uh, on this one again paul uh, any shout outs mate i have a carryover from last week brilliant. so uh brilliant. from last week i did the uh what do we call it like blind box order from walmart where it's <laughs> G.I. Joe Retro, but just a Hasbro symbol. We don't know what you're going to get. And I got... You might not even get uh, Retro. You might get so, Pacified. Yeah, you might. Yeah. You might. So that's what happened last. So I ordered twice, uh, two per order. I ended up with the Screaming Duke and Snake Eyes in the first order. So I'm like, eh. And, a, and, and then, it was uh, bent to crap as well, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Eyes. They were beat. They came in a mailer. So, um, And then the second one was a Stalker. So I was like, all right, halfway there. I just need a Cobra Trooper. And the other one was a classified cobra commander who who knows who was picking that out of uh they're like we'll just throw this guy in there we got we got Unreal. stacks of cobra commanders so i did Unreal. it again and i was like okay let's see what i get let's roll the dice one more time and Snake i got eyes. i got two stalkers <laughs> so i was like two okay stalkers. i've got an, i've got enough stalker so i still need the cobra trooper and i just i haven't had time to go to walmart and by every time i do they're just literally the entire aisle is just empty so I'm like, well, let me do it one more time. So I did it one more time Monday, and it was supposed to come, I think, Wednesday or, or uh, Thursday. And then I got an email that says, we're now we're, we're, running, we're running low on supply or there's an issue fulfilling, so we'll get back to you when we can. And I'm like, it's because I brought it up on last the show, week. On the show, and everybody the millions jumped onto of their app. Yeah, <laughs> millions of people that we get in reach saw it and were like, right, let's – Let's try that as well. And they're like, right, we're out of stock of everything. So, um, I mean, yeah. I guess shout out to Walmart for sending me some more stalkers. That's cool. So I just need the Cobra That's Trooper. That's a bloody um, good way for them, in it, to get rid of some figures that may just be like, you know, may just be like sitting there a bit longer than usual. Yeah, than who knows? Five minutes. Could, <laughs> these have been here for five minutes. We need to shift these guys. Let's bring the G.I. Joe box out from back from the 80s. Send them a sh- shockwave. You know, I got the, uh, you know, those snake eyes uh, here. Hold on. Hold on. Speaking of things, so I got these off of eBay, and I was like, "All right, remember these?" I was like, "Can I these have those? fit?" I'm like, "Oh, they they barely like brilliant." Barely Why were you fit. not wearing these the whole time? I don't know. I love so how I got, they're like they're like a scale too small for you. I love. Yeah, them. I had these as a kid, so I was like, "I'm gonna get another pair of these." I but, love the uh, fact. I love the fact that Roblox shades look just like that as well, like shape. Yeah, wise. they do. Kind of. Yeah. Really dope. So, yeah, we should those. get. If they're licensing, we should get roadblock shades licensed out for adults that we could wear. That's what I'm. You know, or oh, and uh, and profit director Destro ones. Let's not forget. Big time, big time, and also I'm really surprised we haven't seen GI Joe and Nerf collaborations, honestly, because with Nerf yeah. rifles in the classified packaging, clearly Nerf. Yeah. Why don't they just do? Some... It has to be. It has to be on the. I bet you it's on the roadmap. It's got to be. It, it just. It does not. It's on. It it's on a compute. whiteboard. It's on at least a whiteboard somewhere at, at Hasbro to at a certain stage, 2022, whenever they decide they roll out. Because they do Fortnite ones, right? Yeah. Blasters. And um, I thought there was another one they did. but They, they do multiple. They do like their own little zombie hunter line. They do. Yeah, I thought there was another like a, a toy line or something they did other than um, fortnite but i could be misremembering well not just that so. not just that but they do nerf crossover all the time with yeah. other things too like they just crossed over with and this is in my shout outs i managed to snag these they're amazing but they, they crossed over with reebok and did all these different reebok sneakers in nerf crazy nerf colors reebok pumps all that jazz they were on hasbro pulse a couple of days ago uh thursday now if uh, you're watching and um yeah i managed to pick up the pump omni zone twos they're amazing they are orange with lime green on them as well and they're just utterly amazing you're gonna wear those with the cobra commander jacket or the uh uh we call bumblebee jacket yes i'm gonna clash like a (laughs) mother fudger no just uh, unreal they were they were great they weren't up very long either those ones went quick there's only, I think, one pair left on there. Uh, they might be hmm. gone now, but like the others went. The others kind of stuck around a little bit longer. But man, those Reebok Pump Omni Zones were like. Pfft. Anyway, I'm a big sneakerhead. I love them, yeah. and I cannot wait. This is one of the first. This and the Alien Bug Stompers were the ones where I was like so desperate that I had to have them. And when they went up, you know, I just, I just had to do mm-hmm. it. I've got to do it. Got to get in there. And thankfully, they went quick. So it was like. Pfft. 
Nice. Very fortunate because I usually have the worst luck when it comes to those kind of gross pre-order things that last two <laughs> seconds. I don't know what you're. I've never heard of those. I don't I'm, know what you're talking about. Tell you what, I'm so glad we don't have to do that with Target anymore. With Classified, I oh. think I think we've we've reached we've reached heaven with it now. We've, is we're in there. Barbecue still up? Of course he is. Yes. Perfect. No, it's because nobody wants them. They shouldn't have made them. No, uh, no. No, I just think they figured it out a little bit. You know, so hopefully they keep going uh, in this direction. Hey, speaking of uh, pre-orders or what, I don't know what they're called. You got your Storm Shadow, but did you get any of those other, um, I don't know what they're called, the kids Fun- line of Funko- six-inch figures? Oh, okay, let's talk about that then. Let's talk about that then. I showed you this beforehand, didn't I? The uh, Storm Shadow figure, the six-inch. Yeah. Well, do you know what? It's it's actually, they're, they're not going to they're not gonna go well with classified figures, I'm afraid, because oh, okay, they're too small. there's a good difference in, in size uh. here. Let's have a look. So I've got a little tape measure here and oh actually it is six inches i think the classified figures are just big i think it's because they have like the more superhero build a little bit to them so they just look a little bit bigger well this is weird you know what i mean i've now i'm embarrassed because the classified figures are definitely six inches i think do you know what it is i think it's because the legs are spread apart and so yeah. they, they duck down a little lower in yeah, it's probably just shorter than a than a than, a, than six inches. Okay. If, I sh- if I compare the two next to each other here, like Major Blood and Storm yeah, see, Shadow. it's just that the classified ones are beefier, so they just look like they take up more space than the other ones to me. You so know you what sh- I mean? You should be okay, but yeah, there's there's definitely a much beefier vibe going on with classified. Yeah, yeah. I only ordered I ordered uh, two Night Creepers, and that's the only one I'm interested in is the Night Creeper. I'm hoping. We get a classified night creeper down the line, oh. similar to that one. I, you know? um, I'm, I'm still gonna say that I, I would, I would love like a completely new build night creeper, but the red ninja is just screaming for a repaint in that department. If they, if they wanted to go like a little bit cheaper and conserve some stuff, just do a different head, do the and secondary with yeah. the visor, right? And but do the the color and give them. I know this one for that cheaper line i don't know what to even call it uh the movie line for core, kids core ninja figures core ninja figures they don't have the camo on the pants but if you're doing the classified one i would hope they would do the purple and gray or whatever yes, camo definitely it's like it's like lilac and dark purple it's gorgeous i love mm-hmm. that love that camouflage uh, then yeah, you also could got, do, got you ninja could do a night creeper leader oh cool. oh a hundred percent yes um there you go you got um Ninja Tech Snake Eyes, which is a gorgeous deco. I really like that. I like the deco on it. Yep. yep. Really pretty. And then uh, Baroness, which is, she's uh, kind of like a really dark blue. Mm-hmm. And I yep. quite like her. I, honestly, I, in hand, I really like these. I think they're really cool. And Snake Eyes is really nice too. Like, that's just like, you know, the black. Version. I like those like bits of gray on this one, I think it looks Yeah, cool. there's, there's a couple of elements of gray on the arms and the legs. And also, so the, the Arashikagi red can pop a bit brighter as well on that gray, I think. Mm-hmm. But yeah, these are really nice. And they've got like their own individual product photography on the back, which is yep. nice. Um, yeah, I hope these do pretty well. I mean, I hope. We'll see. We'll see how they do. A bit of the Baroness. You know. Ninja Tech Snake Eyes there as well. And stormy which i, I do love that stormy. pose they've got him in stormy. yeah the pose is nice really for cool. uh limited del- i mean there's still decent articulation on him so the, the gray is actually a bit darker on the figure by the way just so you know it's uh yeah i see it comes through yeah. a little bit darker than the the kind of original kind of like lighter gray i think Wonder i prefer they, the lighter uh, gray i do but i don't know a bit more of a pop yep Anyway, yep, yeah, that's what they're going for. The so, contrast. Yeah. yeah, I got those in as well as, and I've been showing these off as well, um, as well as these bad boys uh, from Hot Topic. Mm-hmm. Is there's your Baroness and Scarlet Funko Pops for anyone that really cares. But um, they did I a got, good job on the color palette on Scarlet. Oh, I like that. The color palette on Scarlet's absolutely awesome. There's like that mm-hmm. really deep green going on, isn't there? I really like that. Yeah. Really like that a lot. Obviously, the the win is for me. Uh, the, the ones that I just absolutely the re- the reason I kind of got these in the first place anyway is is this guy like oh, that yeah. version two Storm Shadow is dope. Really surprised they didn't give him his tattoo on his arm. Really surprised yeah. about that. I mean, maybe it's a bit too small for them to squeeze it on there comfortably, but maybe there's know. a sticker in there. <laughs> we could stick it on his forearm. 
that would be great wouldn't it i'd be well into that, that. if you if you're not going to do the paint just put a little sticker in oh yeah that's a good one actually Isn't i like that, that one. adorable i like it because the thing with funko pops that i've never been able to get past are the eyes and yeah. like so the ones that don't have the eyes always look cooler to me yeah with like just yeah covered goggles etc mm-hmm. etc Plus, yeah. it's Commando Snake Eyes, which is kind of my favorite Snake Eyes. So. It's a shame there isn't a classified version for you. Oh, no. We have already had 62 versions of Snake Eyes. We can't possibly get another. I'm kidding. There is a Commando oh, version of I know. classified I was being Snake sarcastic. Eyes. Sarcastic. I know. It's going to be my f- It's going to be my favorite, uh, hands down, when I get it. So ex- I was honestly, when that, when that was revealed, so excited. Um, anyway, yeah, coming back to shout outs. Uh, so that's a shout out to Amazon for the first wave of um core ninja figures and hot topic for the funko pops let me start properly as i normally do with um my the big shout out to all the family and to my wonderful wife kate love you all uh to brian sour who continues to create some amazing graphics for us including the new summer q4 steam which is just wonderful and covered surrounded by at this moment in time and related to brian the armor gear kits are up for sale on the codename iowa website some of the levels are sold out unfortunately but there are some still available so if you want in on that for the assembly required mass online rally in august then you better get over there now link in the description and they're so cool i did an unboxing of last year's if you want to go find that somewhere on our youtube channel and it is just phenomenal i'll be doing the same again um unfortunately they'll probably all be sold out by the time i do that one but they're just so cool um anyway yeah so that's for assembly required massive shout out as well to mr lenny panzika who is currently crushing it on the gij classified line lenny celebrated his birthday on tuesday so we all hope you had a great day lenny happy belated birthday uh considering this is uh, coming out on saturday now um, but I did post a um, like a little Photoshop of him as Breaker, <laughs> holding the oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. holding the machine yeah, I gun. Saw that. So I'll flash that up as well, just for lols. Uh, he he's, he was happy with it, so I I, I didn't <laughs> piss him off, thankfully. So that was good. I also want to shout out as well because it's been an amazing week uh, to the cast and crew, Paramount, Hasbro, etc., for all the amazing trailers, featurettes, whatever that were dropped on Monday. I even reached out to Mr. Henry Goldie himself to congratulate him on Twitter and he was very appreciative and was blown away by the support from fans all over the world. So big shout out to Henry and everyone involved in Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins. We should be getting a second interview with Henry very soon, uh, thanks to Paramount, who are also working on, get this, getting us other members of the cast and crew as well. So keep an eye out for some more amazing content and cool interviews from the Full Force podcast. Surreal is all I'm going to say on that one. That's uh, pretty cool. The friggin' emails I send back and forth, are the. it's so odd. It's like, no, I don't have a preference on what cast or member or crew. Go nuts, whoever you can get hold of. So oh, we could... I have a, I have a preference. <laughs> I <won't... laughs> I'll leave it at that. I know you will. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, it's just blew my, blew, it's blowing me away at the moment. So really, really happy. And thanks to Paramount and my hookup at Paramount, who is amazing i won't say her name because um yeah she does she preferred to be anonymous but you're doing an amazing job and it's great to work with you uh anyway next up i've already mentioned the nerf rebook pump omnizone twos they were amazing shout out to magali villeneuve for posting her beautiful movie classified scarlet artwork up on her twitter page that was earlier today this being friday it's uh, absolutely gorgeous and i for one need an entire book or resource that shows off all of that stunning artwork for the classified series standard and oh my movie. god yeah i mean that's got to happen Cosine. hasn't it that's got to happen hasn't Co- it buddy like a coffee table book like art book like we've got i mean it that happens a lot nowadays and even with collecting the past like i've got a transformers one i've got a he-man one so um but doing one like this would be amazing i don't know when maybe you you have a cutoff because you'll have more coming after so you do like a year one or something a volume oh one, yeah you know totally i mean you could even do it like you know the classified movie one could be separate the mm-hmm. uh the, the, cl- the standard classified could yeah you're absolutely right like all of the 2020 reveal uh you know artwork then all the 2021 right. and do it like a yearly that would be yeah. so awesome i think yeah, like a yearbook basically I, I feel like they're probably building it up they've i i feel like this is already in the cards this is on the whiteboard up there with uh <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what was up there before Oh, the uh, Nerf Blasters. Nerf yeah. Blasters. The Tactical Battle Platform on Forever Clever's whiteboard. That's up there, too. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> sorry. I, so I'm just going to make my own whiteboard. 
It's my fantasy ideas. Actually, um, I have it. It's off, it's off camera. You can't see it. Up there with version two classified Storm Shadow. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, oh, mate. There's so many things on that whiteboard. But that would be amazing. I feel like they're probably waiting for that point where they've got, like, the book. You know, they've got it filled. Right. Um, but a resource, like, the website would be a perfect place to have that artwork attached to, mm-hmm. you know, like... Well, uh, I will say, though, I will say this. If you want a really good resource for classified figures, then check out Justin Bell's Generals Joe's Reborn classified super page because he has basically itemized all the images, all of the characters. You click on them, you go and see all of their diorama shots, all of the artwork that, that's mm-hmm. been published. Um, it's all there, all the different versions up to the most recent figures that have been revealed. Yeah, um, that's a great idea to do. Because Hasbro was, is not on top of the J.J. website right now, so um, it's nice that he's doing that. If Hasbro needs help with that, uh, hit me up. Well, because I really have... left that page to be completely up to date all the time. I know. Like, I think for one thing, I just want the artwork, like the you know where they've yeah. they've updated Zartan, they've updated yep. you know a couple of the other ones. Cobra Trooper still hasn't been updated, and that's been out for right. a while now. Two versions right. of it. Um, you know, it's one I... of the best artworks too. Oh, that's a beauty, isn't it? Absolute beauty. Mm-hmm. They look really like menacing, and yeah, yeah, love it. Um, in any case, that has to happen, please and thank you, Hasbro. If you if you if Hasbro have been watching this long and they've got to the end of this episode, then you know you know what you need to do. We've told you. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, and finally, uh, as we always say, it's Pride Month this month. Goes without saying, but we absolutely will anyway. And we would like to show our support for the LGBTQ plus community. And also, we stand with the Asian and Pacific Islander communities in saying stop Asian hate, and we'll continue to do so. Follow the links in the description if you want more information or just want to do more to help. And finally, to all of our patrons, our listeners, our viewers, thank you so much for keeping me going with all of the lovely messages and the comments and all that stuff that's been happening over the last month or so, as as well as before that. But thank you so much for all that you guys do for us. Hopefully we're churning out the content for you. I know there's been a lot of news bursts, a lot of movie news bursts, a lot of movie stuff. We'll have a, a special with Justin Bell on this saturday as well so you're going to get two weeklies again like you that you you're just being spoiled is what i'm saying (laughs) but you spoil us too so thank you so much for everything you guys do paul mate thank you so much for jumping on for this epic episode my goodness yeah anytime this was uh another crazy week but uh thanks for inviting me on uh this was uh always a blast absolutely man it's a burst by the way uh just kidding (laughs) (laughs) whatever this has been a burst that makes no sense (laughs) that brings us to the end of this episode thank you for watching the full force weekly massive thank you to my awesome co-host paul plastic battles panfalone see you next time and as always after three one two three full force (laughs) that's the best another muppet voice that's the best muppet voice (laughs) one yet i still didn't pull out the boggling i should have planned ahead pull your boggling out i'm le- that, <laughs> not right, that, that not not perfect, that boggling perfect end to the uh, <laughs> to the episode there make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on twitter at the full force liking the facebook page facebook.com forward slash the full force and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on either of those platforms with feedback and questions we also have a patreon page so if you want to show your support for the show see your name up in lights on these videos or enjoy exclusive bonus content then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast or click the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in full force